Shostak was set up in the very earliest days to compensate for the disadvantage experienced by children growing up in poverty. And the whole point of Shostak was to narrow the gap at school entry age between children growing up in poverty and the wider group. I think, I think the question about what it means for children in poverty is enormously important because one of the things that really worries me is that we assume that poor parents are not good parents. And I've argued throughout my whole career that you can be a good parent no matter what, no matter what your income is, but it's harder. And it's harder because, and I'll use healthy eating, for example. There was a study done 30 years ago by a public health expert called Lorna McKee where she looked at poor parents and mothers. They knew about healthy eating. They absolutely knew. It wasn't ignorance. It wasn't that they were lazy. It, wasn't, it was that it's too much of an effort in terms of if you're poor, you will give your children what you know they'll eat. Fresh fruits and vegetables are more expensive and they weigh more. So if you don't have transport, then it's much harder to just get them from the supermarket to the house. If you look at the shopping availability on the low-income estates, they don't have much for fresh fruits and vegetables because people don't buy them and there's so high levels of waste because they go off. So the distance to travel to get the food, the problem of getting the children to eat the food, the problem of you know, not, not worrying, you know, worrying about the waste, all these things make it much harder. I think that most people who have never worked with or lived in poverty themselves don't understand the sheer practicalities of how difficult it is. It doesn't mean it's not possible and we know that there are lots of poor families who manage it, but it's much harder. It's really important to say why the age is not to five very important. It's always also important to say never too early, never too late. So we don't give up on children, and I don't think it's wise to think of a policy that thinks, well, if you don't get it right by four, you've had it. Because that's just not helpful at all, but it's also not true. What is true, and was proved, and um, James Heckman won a Nobel laureate for proving this, that if you intervene early, it's more likely to work and it costs less. So the longer you leave it, the more expensive it gets, and the programs that intervene later have less a record of success. So why is it very important? Well, brain development in the first two years is absolutely phenomenal. But even without everything that we know now about brain development, just think about babies and language development. Babies learn language by the time they're two, years before they ever get in your school. And think about the relationship between being articulate, having language, and doing well at school. And there's a real interesting vicious cycle, which is that if you're not very healthy when you're very young, you tend not to do well at school. If you don't do well at school, you tend to have a less great chance at the employment market. Unemployed people tend to be more ill. So you think of the sort of the disadvantages across a lifetime, that that great start, which is starts with pregnancy and a good birth and bonding and maternal attachment and breastfeeding. You know, it starts very early on. Reading to your baby, singing to your baby. These are all the things that really, really matter in terms of child development that we hadn't really been spending anything on and didn't know much about. The services for children, for very young children, can make a huge difference to life outcomes and can help mitigate those disadvantages of growing up in poverty. So the original aim of Shawstop was about mitigating the disadvantage that children growing up in poverty would experience as a lifetime, not just in terms of their early years. I think the nine months paid maternity leave, I think the notion of there should be some offer for children before school and after they're born is a huge success. And I think the third big success is that we understand now a lot more about the lifetime impact of poverty when children are small. And I think that, that understanding does inform debate. I don't think early years have been hit disproportionately, and I think it's very important to congratulate the government on maintaining the universal three and four year old offer of 15 hours a week free. I think it's re so in terms of the infrastructure, that, that universal, very well used offer, over 95% of four year olds, over 94% of three year olds are in provision. 
and have an entitlement to 15 hours a week free. So I think the government has to be congratulated on maintaining that. I think the risks are the joined upness, and I hate to use that kind of, of jargon. What we worked really hard to do was to say that a child isn't just about a school or a doctor or a social worker. A child is a person in their own right with a family with a complex set of needs for services. And what Shaw Start Children's Centres did was bring together health, education, employment advice, social welfare, parenting programs, um, sports for tots, all sorts of things that were about the whole person. And what I'm afraid we're going to lose, both for very young children and for school age children, is the emphasis on the whole person. So I'm really worried about losing the commitment to integrated services that work together, that talk to each other, that deliver for families and children something that feels more seamless. And that's what we worked hard to achieve. I don't think we achieved it. I don't think we got there. But I think we were moving in the right direction, and I'm worried that that progress is going to be stalled. This assumption that there's dysfunction within families where there's poverty, I think, is incredibly disrespectful, but also can lead to inappropriate targeting. So my big wish for the government is that they think more clearly about what a nuanced offer is all about, how do you identify need in families, and how all of us at some point in our lives need parenting help, not just poor families. All of us at some point in our life need advice and support about our children. So I worry tremendously about the, the, the discourse around the neediest or the most disadvantaged. On the other hand, I'm absolutely delighted that the, the discourse is happening. The system for under fives is a very immature system. It's only been in place the last you know, five to 10 years. So nobody is saying to local authorities they can take their school's budget and spend it on roads. Nobody is saying eight-year-old in a school all day, why should the state pay for that? Well, I want the same principle for young children. You know, the same principle that there is an offer that is not, you know, that, that can't be moved for very young children. And that's the risk. The risk is that a very delicate infrastructure that we worked very hard and got in place very fast is at risk of being dismantled.